the villagers of Little Hangleton still called it the Riddle House, even though it had been many years since the Riddle family had lived there. It stood on a hill overlooking the village, some of its windows boarded, tiles missing from its roof, and ivy spreading unchecked over its face. Once a fine-looking manor, and easily the largest and grandest building for miles around, the Riddle House was now damp, derelict, and unoccupied.
What's the matter? Harry said, startled to see her face so white and terrified. It's the dark mark, Harry, Hermione moaned, pulling him as hard as she could. You know whose sign? Voldemort's? Harry, come on! Harry turned. Ron was hurriedly scooping up his miniature crumb. The three of them started across the clearing. But before they had taken more than a few hurried steps, a series of popping noises announced the arrival of twenty wizards appearing from thin air surrounding them. What's in the box? he asked, pointing at it. Funny you should ask, said Hermione with a nasty look at Ron. She took off the lid and showed them the contents. Inside were about fifty badges, all of different colours, but all bearing the same letters. S-P-E-W. 
Spew, said Harry, picking up a badge and looking at it. What's this about? Not spew, said Hermione impatiently. It's S-P-E-W. Stands for the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare. Never heard of it, said Ron. Well, of course you haven't, said Hermione briskly. I've only just started it. Yeah, said Ron in mild surprise. How many members have you got? Well, if you two join, three, said Hermione. And you think we want to walk around wearing badges saying spew, do you? said Ron. S-P-E-W, said Hermione hotly. I was going to put stop the outrageous abuse of our fellow magical creatures and campaign for a change in their legal status, but it wouldn't fit. So that's the heading of our manifesto. And what is all this noise about? said a soft, deadly voice. Snake had arrived. The Slytherins clamoured to give their explanations. Snape pointed a long yellow finger at Malfoy and said, Explain. Potter attacked me, sir. We attacked each other at the same time, Harry shouted. And he hit Goyle. Look! Snape examined Goyle, whose face now resembled something that would have been at home in a book on poisonous fungi. Hospital wing, Goyle, Snape said calmly. Malfoy got Hermione, Ron said. Look! He forced Hermione to show Snape her teeth. She was doing her best to hide them with her hands, though this was difficult as they had now grown down past her collar. Pansy Parkinson and the other Slytherin girls were doubled up with silent giggles, pointing at Hermione from behind Snape's back. Snape looked coldly at Hermione, then said, I see no difference. Hermione let out a whimper, her eyes filled with tears. She turned on her heel and ran, ran all the way up the corridor and out of sight.
What are you doing here, Sirius? He said. Fulfilling my duty as Godfather, said Sirius, gnawing on the chicken bone in a very dog-like way. Don't worry about me. I'm pretending to be a lovable stray. He was still grinning, but seeing the anxiety in Harry's face, said more seriously, I want to be on the spot. Your last letter. Well, let's just say things are getting fishier. I've been stealing the paper every time someone throws one out, and by the look of things, I'm not the only one who's getting worried. He nodded at the yellowing daily profits on the cave floor, and Ron picked them up and unfolded them. Harry, however, continued to stare at Sirius. What if they catch you? What if you're seen? You three and Dumbledore are the only ones round here who know I'm an animagus, said Sirius, shrugging, and continuing to devour the chicken leg.
It is my belief, and never have I so hoped that I am mistaken, that we are all facing dark and difficult times. Some of you in this hall have already suffered directly at the hands of Lord Voldemort. Many of your families have been torn asunder. A week ago, a student was taken from our midst. Remember, Cedric, remember if the time should come when you have to make a choice between what is right and what is easy, Remember what happened to a boy who was good and kind and brave because he strayed across the path of Lord Voldemort. Remember Cedric Diggory.